And uh, I, was, I was traveling once again for blankets promotion. I was going to France, and I rediscovered this symbol in, in my notes and kind of latched onto it. In, in drawing classes and photography, the first thing they tell you is to start with a frame and then compose within that frame. So I was looking for a frame for the story. In fact, I needed nine frames. Uh, these magic squares, and they're, they're sort of a mystical Sudoku. They're, they're uh, a pre-Islamic talisman from North Africa, but it's a three by three magic square with an Arabic letter inside each square and its corresponding numeric value. And uh, I started to think of, of this as a structure for the book, uh, a book with nine chapters, and each chapter is thematically based on an Arabic letter and its numeric value. And, uh, and uh, this, this is a, a, just a, a playful exercise for my own amusement that I did in my sketchbooks. I was, I was turning uh, Rumi poems, who's a great inspiration, into comics form. So uh, Rumi and Sufism in general is the energy that informed Habibi. Rumi talks about this idea that you need to keep breaking your heart until it opens. And uh, that's essentially what I did with the book. I, I took the, the sketchbooks and dashed them on the floor, shattered the container, and, and then was ready to start piecing them together in a new form. And that was the beginning of the second stage, or the second draft, uh, this thumbnail draft. And uh, at this point I was working with nine chapters, whatever I had already drawn in those 200 pages of sketchbooks, I sort of like squeezed in, if possible, into the letter that suited it. Um, and then all the future chapters um, had this sort of contrived structure that I had to map them on. It was like a skeleton that I had to map the flesh of the book onto. And this is the first time that I was thinking about the book in terms of pages. Before it was just panels and, and that flow. And now I started to think about page composition and, and facing pages spreads. Um, and also, I guess, thinking of it as an actual tangible book. And uh, that I, that's always been an important thing for me, is that Habibi would be an actual print book. And I've had to resist the last couple of years, or actual, actually battle publishers that are pushing for my books to be in e-format. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I, at some point I might have, have to break down, but I certainly don't want to be at the beginning of that revolution. I think uh, for prose books, it might make perfect sense to read them on some sort of e-reader. Because um, there's already this added separation from the writer and the reader in terms of typography. Um, whereas comics are handwritten or hand-drawn by the artist, by at least the old school of artists. So it's ink on paper, and it's, it's more akin to handwriting. And, uh, and it can't be translated like the way prose is translated into typography. Um, and so for that reason, I think that comics have this ability to keep a, a foothold in print longer than prose will. It, it makes sense to read prose on any kind of e-reader. Um, this, this thumbnail process I got caught up in for far too long. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it was, it was uh, when was it? Summer of 2005 that I finished a first draft, or second draft, whatever this would be. The thumbnail was the second draft. I finished that in 2005, and uh, I still was not happy with the ending. It felt something was missing, some key ingredient. Uh, but there was, it was a whole story. It was a beginning, middle, and end. And I turned it in to my editor, who is this amazing woman, Anjali Singh, at Pantheon. Um, and uh, I, I wanted guidance. And she's like, oh, you know, it's great, blah, 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 but some key ingredient is missing. The ending doesn't quite work. Like I know, but what? <laughs> <laughs> and, and she really wasn't able to dig me out of that hole. So I kind of got lost in this labyrinthine tangle for the next year. Um, and during that time, also, I lost my editor. She moved to a different publisher. Um, and uh, and yeah, I don't know how to explain where that whole year went. Um, <laughs> other than that, I was editing my first draft, and I don't think barely anything from that first draft stuck around. I, I kind of revamped everything. I redrew hundreds of pages and discarded them. And, uh, and I still couldn't figure out the ending. That was the big hang-up. Up until the end, I could not 
figure out the ending whatsoever. So I finally resolved to start working on the final art in hopes that the ending would reveal itself as I drew. That, that method worked for me with blankets. So, um, yeah, and this is a crazy way to work. I don't recommend it for anyone. Everybody chats <laughs> <laughs>